A parallelogram has sides of length 13.2 centimeters and 16.5 centimeters. The longer diagonal has a length of 21.5 centimeters. Find the angle opposite of the longer diagonal. And we're asked to give that in degrees and round to the nearest tenth. So they give me sides, a parallelogram. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a parallelogram. And uh, they give me the sides of the parallelogram and my terrible parallelogram, but that's okay. They give me this parallelogram and they tell me that the sides are 13.2, 16.5, and the diagonal, the long diagonal, because there'll be a short diagonal this way, but the long diagonal is 21.5 centimeters. And they want me to find the angle across from the long diagonal. Now I look at that and immediately my brain says to me, ooh, ooh, I have what's called an oblique triangle. Law of sines, law of cosines type problem. So I redraw this 21.5, 16.5, and 13.2 all in centimeters, centimeters, and centimeters. And what I have here is a law of cosines problem. Okay, and uh, I know it's a law of cosines problem because this is a side, side, side triangle. And whenever you have a side, side, side triangle, you're going to use the law of cosines. So, knowing this, I need to solve for this angle. In a previous video, I took this formula, a squared equals b squared minus, excuse me, plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a, and I solved it for angle A and said angle A was equal to A squared minus B squared minus C squared over negative 2BC, okay? And then we take the inverse cosine of that, okay? The inverse cosine of that. Now, the only trick to remember here is if this is angle A, this is side A, and then B and C don't really matter. So, if I want to solve for angle A, all I have to do is actually take these numbers, A, B, and C, so A, B, and C, and plug them in. And so I take my calculator, my trusty TI-84, my graphing calculator here, and um, I want to plug in these numbers. So I say, okay, fine, A, which is 21.5 squared, minus 16.5 squared minus 13.2 squared. So A, B, and C, all squared. Um, that's this numerator. Now the denominator. So divided by negative 2 times B times C. Okay, so 16.5 and 13.2. And that's going to give me a decimal. Okay, it's going to give me a decimal, specifically a negative decimal. That's okay. Um, so then we're going to uh, do the last step, which is the inverse cosine here. Okay, the inverse cosine of this answer. Hit enter. And I get 92.07. Okay, and looking at this angle, I mean, it's a parallelogram. This is, I'm expecting this to be bigger. Uh, if you go back to the original picture, uh, as a parallelogram, I'm expecting the angle across from this long diagonal to be bigger than 90 degrees. And when all is said and done, I get an answer bigger than 90 degrees. So that makes good sense to me. So my answer is 92.07. So I'm going to call that 92.1 degrees. And so that is the larger angle in this parallelogram here. And of course, this smaller angle and this larger angle are going to add up to 180, and so you could find this smaller angle pretty easily. So, fun little problem. A lot of people don't know how to approach it because it's a parallelogram. Um, but once you cut that parallelogram in half, it's actually two triangles, and so it's very simple to approach. Um, so I thought that would be a fun one to work, and if you have any questions, please let me know.